The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the April 20th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is gonna toss at us. Now today, you and I, we're gonna go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone and dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question you can't dial in, you can always send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tigers demo, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got a bit of a mixed bag out there. The mix is really coming from the semis, which are just slightly positive. The trainees are up 111. Other U.S. indices trading to the downside. 85 points for the uh, Dow. That's off a quarter percent. Half percent for the S&P are 22. Six tenths for the Nasdaq 100, 79. And four tenths for the Russell. That's about seven points to the downside. Gold is up four bucks, about a quarter of a percent. Silver's off 12 cents. The lights recruit is back a buck 89, printed out at 77.27. Natural gas is off about a nickel. The 30-year Treasury up 22 ticks, printed out at 130.13. Leading the charge, dollar-wise, the upside, we've got Lamb Research up 33 bucks, nearly 7%. Snap-on Tools up 20 bucks or 8%. Watsco up 15 bucks, nearly 5%. KLA Corp is up 14 bucks, nearly 4%. RLI Corp is up about 9% or 12 bucks. Badger Meter up about 12 bucks or 10%. To the downside, it is Tesla. Not having a great day here or in the air. Tesla's off about 14 bucks or 8%. Thermo Fisher Scientific down 14 bucks, 2.5%. MicroStrategy off 11, 3.5%. Pool Corporation, 3% or 10 bucks. And Replogen Corp is off $8. That's a 5% move to the downside. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. So what do we want to look at? Well, let's first go figure out where the bottoms came in this morning and what we're going to pay attention to and watch. So let's switch over to the white background charts. It's the 30-minute charts that we're going to take a look at. And this morning, what we noticed out here was that there really a couple different things. First, on the 30-minute chart for the ES Mini, upper left-hand panel, we had a TD9 count pattern that formed at 9 a.m. Then we had price pushing lower into the 8.30 time frame, and that triggered a rose momentum indicator signal. And then the very next session formed a three-river morning star pattern. So the support level, the ultimate support level for today's activity is going to be the low of the day. That low of the day is 41.43. Watch that. Now, what we have on the day on the 30-minute time frame, we have price trading above the top of its profile. And uh, so this could suggest a move up to 41.70.50. That's the ES Mini. If we take a look at the NQ, now in the NQ, you won't see a TD9 count bottom. You won't see any kind of a bottom out here. The bottom that you should see, and this was very, it's very subtle, but it was important because what we had this morning was TD9 counts on each of, or on three of the four equity future contracts. One that we did not was the NQ, but what we had in the NQ was a telltale sign that the market at least wanted to rally this morning, at least going into the open. How, what was that sign? Well, you had those confirmed TD9 count bottoms on the ES, YM, and the Russell 2000. And yet, when we take a look at the NQ, as markets were pushing lower at 830, what did the NQ not do? The NQ did not take out the low of the morning at 5 o'clock. To me, that was a little signal that, okay, now we're ready, getting ready to take off to the upside. Well, that's what it did. And it ran right up to where it should have run, 
which is that TD9 count breakdown resistance level. That is that green line. It's not a line I draw in there. It's an automated line. You should want to know that tool out there. If you subscribe to Mastering Probability, you'll have a workshop, and you're going to see all kinds of charts that will all have the TD9 so you can become uh, a, a, a expert at it. And it's a real easy pattern. Uh, to truly become an expert at. So price runs right into the resistance. Take a look at that NQ at 13,153. Now price is trading above its other resistance levels at 13,081. So that's the top of the profile, and that becomes support, as does its oscillator and change line. In the case of the Dow Equity Future contract, it stopped at the TD9 count breakout level, but I don't really use that. I, I'm not saying that's the reason why price stopped. I'd say it's more has to do with the NQ in controlling the markets than anything else. Well, I'd say the NQ and the Russell 2000. The Russell 2000 also having a TD9 count bottom and price makes its way all the way up to its TD9 count breakdown resistance level. So here's what I would share with you thus far at 11.12 in the morning. Watch the NQ and watch the Russell 2000 to the upside. You can watch them all to the downside. Any closes below the morning lows are gonna suggest that we had even further lower. But right now to the upside, watch 13, 153 and a quarter inside the NQ. If you get a 30 minute bar, uh, close above that, you're back up to the highs of yesterday afternoon. And the same is really true with the Russell 2000. The level there to be watching is 1806.70. So that's what is least going on in the short-term time frame. What else do we know about the short-term time frame? Excellent question. Why don't we go find out what's going on with regard to market press since we're taking a look at 30-minute time frame charts. Excellent choice. Well, if we take a look at the S&P 500, this is as of 11.12 in the morning. There are 182 instruments trading above the top of a 30-minute profile versus 119 below the bottom. That is bullishness out here. So even though we've seen a back off inside the ESP on its 30-minute time frame, it's as market breath is still very bullish. Let's take a look at the NQ, see what kind of participation we've got out here. And with regard to the NQ, there are 29 instruments above and 37 below. So it's the NQ that is a little stinker out here. Um, watch profile support 13081 on any further pullback. Should we see a further pullback? Let's take a look at the other time frames out here. Just as long as we take a look at market breadth. Here we've got the S&P 500. So what we know about the S&P 500 or the ES Mini, it is market breadth bullish for the weekly, the daily, the 240, and the 60, and the 30-minute time frame charts out there. Definitely not the sign of a bear market or a market that wants to move lower. That is with regard to the S&P 500. Of course, the NASDAQ, in my opinion, could easily... Uh, pull that lower. Oh, let's uh, take a look at the NASDAQ as long as we're talking NASDAQ, Stevie. So in the case of the NASDAQ, which did have a bearish crossover on a 30-minute time frame, so here's where the problem is. The 60-minute chart, so or the 60-minute time frame shows 50 trading, 50 instruments trading below profile, 17 above. And on a four-hour time frame, what we're dealing with here is 28 above and 40 below. So the entire focus now today should just really be on the NQ out there. Uh, the Russell 2000, I don't have profile data to provide to you. So yeah, I mean, still watch that 1806.70. That'll provide you with some information. But uh, let's go take a look at the, uh, let's take a deeper dive into the NQ charts here. If you give me a moment, we'll try to get back to those. I know we're going to a break shortly. Those are the Dow, but let's see if we can get the NQ charts up here. Just see if there's anything else of significance. And it looks like we're going to have to wait till we get back to the break. So we get back to this break. We'll, we'll finish looking at the NQ. Sat P wants to take a look at Etsy, Jambalaya, XBI, Dano, XLE, Alton, the Bank of America. Keep those cards and letters coming, folks. Steve Roach with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So still the semis and the trainees uh, trading to the upside just slightly. The other U.S. indices trading to the downside. But we're going to talk about the 30-year Treasury with uh, John in Philly. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you this morning? Steve, I'm doing very well. Hope you're doing the same. I am. Thank you for asking. The 30-year Treasury uh, formed bar number seven of a TD9 count yesterday. It looks like we've got a little bullish engulfing candle uh, at the completion of an A to B equals CD to the downside pattern. What are you seeing out here and how can I help you? Steve, I uh, was attracted to buying, bottom picking buying attempt on that long bond yesterday. <clears throat> uh, as uh, Wednesday, yesterday, bonds got down right uh, right to the 129 area, yes. which uh, was virtually a double bottom versus exactly three weeks prior. I think that was Wednesday, the 29th of March. Anyway, uh, we went down there. We stabilized. I bought some. It's bounced a bit, and I would categorize what's happened thus far as merely a bounce. My question to you is, is there anything you're looking on the weekly, monthly, or daily charts that suggest, hey, expect a turn back up? And if there's something that suggests that, what levels need to be cleared on the shorter term that give us confidence we've got a bottom in the rearview mirror, if you will? Sure, sure. Okay, so let's try to answer those questions here. First, we have the daily time frame chart up on our screen. What John is referring to as far as yesterday's action, that was coming back, and that was testing the uh, swing point that formed out here on March 29th. If we take a look at another pattern that was forming, we have an A to B equals CD pattern. Now, we did not get a bullish reversal candle yesterday. We had price basically stop right at the bottom of its bullish structured daily, uh, daily profile out there. Now, I say bullish structure because the bottom and the center are at the exact same price point, which is 129.22. So, John, that's a really important uh, level to help uh, you answer the question or what the market's intentions are. Because if we get a close below that, that certainly suggests we should see lower price. Now, the caveat there could be that because we have bar number eight of uh, uh, bar number eight for me today, and that'll for, that'll we'll get bar number eight today as long as we get a close below one thirty twenty three. And so um, if we do see a move below that, the question would be where are we at in the TD nine counts? 
But let's talk about what we have at the moment. We have a bullish engulfing candle that is um, giving us the sign of a buy the D point pattern. This is the 1 to 1.272 A to B equals CD expansion. What I don't know, John, is just how strong sellers are. We know where they reside. That's at 130.24, 24, 30 seconds out there. I know it's on my screen, it says 76. You got to do the math on that. So it's 130 uh, and 24, 30 seconds. If price can close above that, we're still not completely out of the woods because just above that is that green oscillator and change line. But if price did close above that, which would be about 131.15, give or take, John, then that would be suggesting that we head back up to the highs. So that's the daily time frame. Any questions about this chart before I move, uh, size this down and we take a look at the other ones? So far, so good. Thank you. Perfect. Now, when we get price that comes back to a, a support area and most certainly is potentially completing the bottom, which it, we're getting that signal today, to give us confirmation that this is likely to be a bottom with some type of traction, we like to see the intraday signals generating that same type of, uh, of uh, message to us. Well, on a uh, here, the shortest term time frame that I've got is a 30 minute time frame. Well, the 30 minute time frame looks more like a top than it does a bottom. However, there is no topping. There's a topping pattern, but there's no confirmed top out here. And price remains above this, a 30 minute chart above the top of its profile and green oscillator and change line. This is still bullish. The 60 minute time frame chart, the exact same set of patterns out there. No bearish reversal candle, at least not just yet. You could get one by 12 noon, but let's not worry about what a coulda, shoulda. Let's come back to it at 12 noon. On the two hour time frame chart, you have a TD nine count top that was negated. So that's telling us that it formed a nice TD nine count bottom, Roadsman to indicator bottom. All the bottom charts here have have Roadsman to indicator bottoms. And those were lining up at the same time that John was taking a look at that long position that he took yesterday out here. So you're getting confirmation from those charts. Because the two hour time frame chart uh, negated his TD nine count bottom, that would make 130.29 a very key level for you to watch and observe. Um, if price closes above that, the two hour chart is telling you that you have a change in trend and that change in trend, you know, could take us all the way up to 132.28. That's the four hour TD nine count breakdown resistance level. When we take a look at the four hour time frame chart, John, no resistance. The five hour time frame chart, no resistance. Price is above that. So to summarize, the daily has got uh, appears that it will form a buy the D point pattern. The five, uh, the 30 minute chart and 60 minute chart, they are bullish because they are trained above profile as well as their green oscillator and change line. The, the two hour, four hour, five hour all have nice bottoming patterns. They've all traded above resistance levels. The next resistance level for that time frame is 130.29. But 130.24 is a key area for you to watch as well. That's at the top of that daily profile. Did that provide you with the information you were looking for? What else can I sh share with you? You know, that, uh, that just hit the nail on the head, Steve, that 130.24 to 131 area. Perfect. That uh, top of the profile on the daily chart and that um, TD9 count uh, breakdown resistance level on that two-hour chart come together nicely. You look at that confluence. We'll, uh, we'll just take step by step see what happens. Perfect, perfect. Hey, John, always good to hear from you. Thanks for calling. Congrats to you. Kudos on that uh, trade uh, yesterday. And have a terrific Thursday. You as well, Steve. Thanks again. Bye. You bet. You bet. That was John in Philly, and that was a 30-year treasury out there. Let's take a look at uh, another request that came in earlier. This was from uh, Sat P, who is, uh, you, I think, is inside the Tiger's Den, or is usually inside the Tiger's Den. And that was to take a look at Etsy. I believe uh, he's looking for an entry price or areas for an entry price. So let's get those charts up on the screen. Here's the daily time frame. Now, the daily time frame shows a Roadsman to indicator bottom that uh, formed or con confirmed on April the 14th. That was a bullish engulfing candle. Now, price has traded back into that candle the last couple of days. That candle session had volume about 2.7 million shares, but that's not the actual swing point. There's really two swing points out. It's really So there's the, the swing point that formed on March 13th. 5.6 million shares there. Yesterday was 2.3 million shares. Today, so far, you're at 356. So you're really pulling back with light volume. The other swing point was the one from April the 12th, and there was 2.8 million shares. So you like this. Okay, you're asking for a buy point or a buy area right now. Right here, right now, or wait for a little bit of a pullback because you're right up at that support level. And if you were to see a close below 99.24, then what I would do is I would just jettison the position. So you take a very small loss, close below that, so something else may be going on. 
That's one level to look at. Another level to consider looking at, because you have a TD nine count bottom that formed last uh, week. And that low out there is also is 99.41. So are we 99.41 across the board here. Uh, 99.41, and this one was 99.24. So I'm going to leave the 99.24 area out here. Uh, but you've got a nice TD nine count bottom that says that what price should do in Etsy is move up to the 111.42 area. In the monthly chart we just have a good old fashioned consolidation. The 30 minute time frame chart. Sat P, is there any information here that can be assistance to you and I? And all that I can say right now is price is trading above a TD nine count breakdown level. So what you're looking for is for price to get above 105.29. If it gets above 105.29, this thing is free to run to the upside. But you're looking for an entry point. I would have to say based upon the weekly and the daily charts, now is the time. Hope that helps you out. And best regards. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So Jambalaya inside the Tiger's Den wants us to take a look at XBI and LABU uh, and just really compare the two charts. So I believe that was your request out there. That's what we've got up on our screen on the left side is XBI. That's going to be the one-to-one -one ETF. LABU is either the two or the three-time ETF. What you'll see out here is they both are really have the same patterns right now. Today is going to form bar number eight. It'll form bar number eight as long as price closes below or above the close of bar number four. And then tomorrow 
could become bar number nine. But bar number nine is going to have to close above the uh, bar, the close of bar number five. So you'd be you'd need to get a rally, and then you'd have to get a spike above yesterday's high in order to form a, a TD nine count top. Uh, either today, tomorrow, or on Monday out there. So everything here looks bullish. Looks bullish to me. We're just trading inside of yesterday's bar, so no damage done there. You do have a new profile. That new profile, well, you've got one. Well, oh, you do have one in LABU, so that's what you're trading. So on LABU, the uh, support level, and price is above that profile. And that's uh, Generally speaking, that is a bullish message. So you got the profile that's got the top at 526, the center at 499, and 485 is the bottom. And with regard to XBI, which is really those profiles are perhaps more important out here. I would say they're more important. Uh, those profiles form with support at 7628. That's the bottom of the profile. Uh, you've got uh, 7846 is the top of the profile. So you've got 7628. That's both the bottom and the center. But 7846 really should act as support. So I, what I see out here in comparing the two, I see really the same type of patterns. Both are still signaling that uh, price should continue to move higher. So Jambalai, I hope that it helps you out. Take a look at the two side by side. Thanks so much for your request and have a, a terrific uh, Thursday. Let's go to the next request, which is coming in from Dano inside the Tiger's Den. And Dano wants to take a look at the XLE, the energy sector which might go along, might be helpful to uh, Hector and Patty, who just recently wrote in and want to take a look at um, Exxon Mobil. But here as we take, whoops, that's XBI. I didn't really want that. I see I had that in a different spot as well. Okay, let's try the XLE, the energy sector. So in the case of the energy sector out here, it's lost its momentum. At least that's the message as of today from a daily perspective. And it's lost its momentum, one, because price is now trading below the green oscillator and change line, but it's also trading below the bottom of its profile. So two consecutive closes below 85.48 is going to suggest that price should move back further. Now, this thing gapped up here on the trading day of April the 3rd, and the volume on that move was 31 million shares. So far today, in just uh, two minutes above uh, two hours of trading, we've got volume of 6 million shares. So again, the gap that we saw out here had volume of uh, 31 million. We're pulling back with lighter volume. But nonetheless, we're really below support out here. So it's this whole gap area that could become a target for the energy sector. And that gap area runs from 82.97, I'd say, all the way down to, I'd use the low of 84 and a quarter out there. Now, the weekly time frame chart suggests that it's also losing its momentum, which is pretty much consistent. It has lost its momentum ever since about the uh, December uh, time frame of last year. You do have price consolidating with inside its profile, but this is suggesting, so if we're looking for the next area of support based upon the daily trading below profile and its oscillator and change line, that next area of support inside the energy sector is gonna be 8302. Monthly chart still looks pretty good out there, meaning that it's trading above the green oscillator and change line with inside its profile. So with regard to the XLE, Dano, and I know that you're short here, I would stay short. I would close out that short if you got to close above that 8531 or 8548. Those would be the two areas that I would be watching. So uh, stay short. It looks pretty good. Uh, you're only in day number two of a uh, consecutive move lower out there. So it looks like the energy sector may be getting ready to uh, pull back for a few more days out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at it. We will take a look at the uh, Exxon Mobil charts uh, uh, in just a, a few moments, see if those really just support what we just took a look at out here. The next request coming in from Alton, and Alton wants to take a look at Bank of America. He's interested in the short-term chart, so to speak. Now I've got the daily, the weekly, and the monthly. So let's just see what we see out here on the daily. Roads momentum indicator bottom, no topping pattern. You've got an A to B equal C to the upside, no bearish reversal candle that still wants to move higher. However, price has now dipped into a new profile, Bank of America, that formed yesterday. So support is between 29.29 and 29.62, and resistance is 30.27. You close above 30.27, you're likely headed higher out there. The weekly chart shows that its oscillator and change line is that little booger. That's your resistance. That is basically at 29.97. So if you can close above that, we'll say a close above 30.27 would be a very bullish outcome this week, both for the daily and the weekly time frame charts. And on a monthly basis, your resistance level is going to be 31.71 on Bank of America. On a 30-minute time frame out here, 
What do we have for BAC? BAC, just simply pulling back after forming a road momentum indicator and TD9 count top. It does that at 10 o'clock in the morning. Did that on the 18th. And our price continues to find support at its breakout level, 29.85. So 29.85 is a very key level for you to be watching all then from your short-term battle standpoint. As long as that holds, then you just have at this stage here at least a consolidation. If that level fails, short-term-wise, you'll be looking at a pullback to about 29.35. Now, today is going to become what appears to be day number two of consecutive moves lower. We take a look at the Bank of America chart out there. You know, I can't say specifically that this one has that typical two-bar knee-jerk reaction low. The last time we had consecutive moves to the downside, it lasted for three consecutive sessions. So looks like we might get Bank of America that trades lower today as well as tomorrow out there. So, Alton, I hope that helps you out. Thanks much for your request. The next request coming in from LB. And LB wants to take a look at uranium. U-R-N-M is the uh, ticker symbol. And I think it was just to uh, get a review of it. So when we take a look at uranium, uh, the uh, Sprott Uranium Miners ETF out there, it's got a beautiful TD9 count bottom. That most certainly took hold. That formed way back in uh, March out here. And uh, right now, the, the, the biggest concern here is that you're trading below its red oscillator and chains under, just slightly below that. We actually... It's trading just slightly above it. You'd love to see it hold that level because that's an area of support. And if that area fails, odds would favor, because you're within inside that swing point here from March 15th, that you get back and at least test this hammer candle from a few days ago, April the 6th out there. Now, volume on that hammer candle, 217,000 shares yesterday, 244 as you're pushing down into it. And today so far, you've got uh, 94. So 94, you're only at about... You're about uh, your similar volume to yesterday, and that hammer candle has uh, only 217. So, watch the close. If it can close above, I'd really like to almost say 2970. It's 2967. I'm going to say 2970. Uh, then you're okay. If it closes below 2960, odds favor move lower, and perhaps a retest of that hammer candle. You can see a diagonal trend line that is formed out here, so maybe that might be the area. The, the weekly chart says I want to pull back further. Again, you're below price and uh, below profile support and the red oscillator and change line. And the monthly chart does not provide us with a ton of information out there. So URNM, yeah, it uh, it is the, uh, well, it's the Sprott Uranium Miners ETF coda. Uh, where do you short URNM? That was the question. Uh so the swing point that it's really trading into has volume of 1.2 million shares. And each time we've come back there, first was 278, then was 217, and then yesterday was uh, 244. I don't see the short setup here, Coda, not as we speak right now. The answer to your question would be 3155. The 3155 would be the top of that daily bearish structured profile out there. So that's what I see. I hope that helps you out. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We get back, we're going to take a look at Exxon Mobil, SBSW, Gold, and Apple. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks, and thanks for all the requests out there. It just makes the show, makes it easy for me. I, you know, a number of things to manage here, but just a smooth, we just stay with it. Uh, and so we're going to continue uh, doing the same thing. Still a mixed bag market out there. Uh, the instruments trading the upside, the uh, trannies and the uh, semis. The downside, the other U.S. indices. We're taking a look at Exxon Mobil. This is for Hector. And uh, Hector, what we've got out here is Exxon Mobil's chart looks different or better than the uh, energy sector, the XLE sector. Right now, what we have is we have price consolidating with inside its daily profile. Now, in the case of Exxon Mobil, this confirmed a sell the D point pattern. It did that on the trading day of April 6. You can see the A to B, the A starts at bar number seven. The uh, A point ends where it says bar number eight is part of the Chapman wave, then a retracement for, for three to four days. That sets up the C point at the center of its bullish structure daily profile, and it was off to the races. So right now, you just have a consolidation. If price were to close below 112, 38, then Hector, that would be telling us that price is going to go at least close that gap. And to do that, it would need to get down to 110.17. On a weekly time frame, you have a good old fashioned consolidation right now with inside its profile that runs from 102.34 up to 115.31. And the uh, monthly chart also consolidated with inside its profile. And resistance here is the 115.74 area. That's the top of a new profile that formed. Well, it formed a couple of months ago. So that's what I see when I take a look at Exxon Mobil out here. Just a good old-fashioned consolidation at this moment in time. And it's moving again. So it gapped up on the trading day of April 3rd with 28 million shares. So far for Exxon Mobil, you are about 5 million shares of downside. So pulling back with light volume is still good volume, but nowhere near the volume on that move to the upside. So Hector and Patty, have a terrific Thursday. Thanks so much for writing in and, uh, and your request. Next request coming in from uh, Thomas. I believe that was by email. And Thomas wants to take a look at SBSW. And uh, I, I just, I, I don't have the emails saved. I had so many, I just wanted to get everything up on my screen out here. Uh, but SBSW is the Cybane Stillwater ADR out here, trading at about $9.20. The only thing that I see out here, the, your your areas of um, of battle, let's say, the battleground area is at 966. So uh, this is traded above the top of its daily profile. It's above a red oscillator and change line, not nearly as strong as a green, but it is still above resistance, period. 
Uh, so where's the next resistance level? That would be that 966 level. That's a TD9 count breakout area. Now, price should be able to make its move up there. At least that's the message as of 1144 on Thursday, April 20th. Why is that? Because price is trading above the top of the weekly profile, 894. Now, that could be a different message at 401 tomorrow afternoon because if price closes back below 894, well, then what this is telling us, Thomas, is you just have that good old-fashioned consolidation inside that weekly profile with inside its profile file levels. A nice road momentum indicator bottom on the weekly. So I do like this uh, trade setup that you have here. The monthly chart, eh, it's running into resistance at as it tries to get back inside its profile. So that's troublesome, but the month is not over. Uh, that level is 926. You'd love to see price close above 926. That would get you back inside that profile. And then, of course, you'd love to see it close above 966. That would then give you a message that we're headed up to the 1108 area. So with regard to Cybane Stillwater, things look good. If you're long this position, I would stay long that position. And this should uh, take you up in that 966 level. So, Thomas, thanks so much for taking the time to write in and for making a request. The next request, request is coming from John C. That's inside our Tiger's Den. And John wants to take a good Goldilocks. So let's pull up the charts here for gold. What do we have? Well, we talked about consolidations inside of profile levels. You certainly have that on a daily standpoint with regard to gold. Gold forms a Rhodes momentum indicator top. That went ahead and confirmed on April the 14th. What has transpired since then is a consolidation with inside that profile. Now, yesterday, what uh, gold did was it formed a bullish hammer candle. So here's kind of the question. We can make we can say that yesterday inside gold was a Gartley buy pattern. How can we say that, Stevie? Well, I'm going to draw the A to B point out here. And then we're just simply going to copy that and move that over right there. Well, maybe it didn't make it. Maybe it didn't make it. It's, uh, yeah, it's too far away. All right, so we're not going to say that. What we're going to do is come right back and say, well, we've got inside of Goldilocks, there's a road momentum indicator top. We've got a consolidation with inside his profile. Yesterday, Bulls said we are defending at least that bottom level of the profile, 1974.20, as it went ahead and confirmed a bullish hammer candle. So may, price might go target 2033 or 2044 to the upside. Of course, to the downside, it could target 1974. With regard to a five-hour time frame chart, I don't see anything out here other than price dealing with resistance at 2020. 20. You got to love that. So close above that, you're headed higher. You're dealing with 2020 20 on the four-hour time frame chart. That seems like a real strong resistance level out there, John C. So watch that to the upside. The 60-minute chart shows resistance at 20, 20, 30. That was a TD9 count breakdown level. But on the 60-minute chart out there, I see another TD9 count breakout level at 20, 25. So we're going to make the number that gold needs to close above to be on its potential merry way to the upside is going to be that uh, uh, TD9 count breakdown resistance level off of the 60 minute time frame. And that was up the price point of 2025, even Steven out there. Nice bottoms that we see. Um, so I just got a good old fashioned consolidation, John. Not much more that I can uh, add to it than that. So I hope that provided you with the information we're looking for. If not, let me know and we'll try to get that to you. The next request, the last request that I've got right now is from Dennis in uh, West Palm Beach. And Dennis writes in, he'd like to take a look at Apple. And so as we take a look at Apple, um, hey, thanks, Daniel, for that uh, information out there. Uh, Panic buying after the flooding. Yeah, interesting. Um, but at, you know, I saw it down in Fort Yeah, but that's, that's weird. So I had asked the question earlier. So in Florida, what I have been noticing, this goes all the way up to Jupiter. So I've got a painter that, that's, that's uh, here today doing some work uh, for us. And uh, he was up at Jupiter. He had to stop at several different exits. And he was even using Gas Buddy to try to find gas. And every time he went to a spot that said that they had it, they, they didn't have it. Now, we've experienced the same thing here in the uh, in the uh, Del Rey, the Boca, the Palm Beach uh, area, where you pull up to a gas station, you see those yellow bags everywhere. And what, what was what John had mentioned inside the Tigers, and he said that the, the report was panic buying after the flooding that was down in Fort Lauderdale. So maybe that's the case. But it, it is very strange out there. Very strange. Very strange. Yeah, difficult to find gas. Uh, you know, I usually never worry about where my gas tank is at. And now I'm just paying attention. And every day I'd pass a gas station and, hey, APL, what the heck? Oh, it's not. Uh, uh, and 
and more yellow bags. So I'm glad to know that it's just maybe it is just has to do with that flooding, uh, John. So thanks for pointing that out. But Dennis wanted to take a look at Apple. He doesn't really well. He's hey, Dennis is up in West Palm Beach. Are you finding gas issues when you should pass uh, gas stations up there, Dennis? So here we take a look at Apple. Apple is bullish. It's bullish because there's no bearish uh, reversal candle to confirm a roach momentum indicator top. There's no TD nine count top. Price is above the top of its profile. Daily time frame bullish. Weekly time frame bullish. Price is trading above its descending uh, price channel this is suggesting to move to 171.53 however before price can get there the sellers at 168.79 say get past me steve-o so with regard to apple dennis 168.79 is the next key area to look at price should go target that if you can get above that then 171.53 is going to be your next target but apple looks pretty darn good and yesterday on a pullback where did it find support right at its breakout level at 166.11. Steve Rhodes with TF and Adam. We'll be right back to close out the show. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back up, folks. we got a number of questions. I'm going to go blow through these as quickly as I can. The first one is take a look at Morgan Stanley. It's really questions about the intraday time periods. You want to pay attention to the 30-minute chart out here. What we see in Morgan Stanley is we see a TD9 count Rhodes momentum indicator top. 
price below its green oscillator and change line. What you want to watch is the price levels of 90.47, 90.07, and 89.71. If price closes below 89.71, that's a TD nine count breakout support level. You're looking at lower price. So that's what I'd be paying attention to with regard to Morgan Stanley. Uh, next request was to take a look at uh, YCS. When I take a look at YCS today, we'll form a. So you're going to get a TD nine count top inside of YCS. That's going to confirm today and complete tomorrow. And that was top was uh, taking us right here to the 57.94 level, the TD nine count breakdown area. What YCS should do, you're asking, should you buy, hold, sell? What YCS should do now is pull back to test its oscillator and change line, perhaps the top of its profile. That's the place to add, around 56.76 to 56.91. The weekly chart still a nice consolidation after a TD nine count bottom with inside its profile. So nothing else that I see there to add to that uh, thought process. Uh, next request is to take a look at Nike. Dan, Nike is consolidating with inside its daily profile. That's a new profile that formed with support at 124.15 and resistance at 126.65. I don't see any kind of a top out here. I just see a sideways consolidation. The weekly chart looks bullish and suggests move to 131.31 out there. The next request is to take a look at um, HUT. If we take a look at HUT, uh, what is HUT doing? HUT is trading below profile support of 185. A second close below that tomorrow is going to suggest lower price. The target areas are going to be uh, maybe around 159, could be around 154. Uh, that's what I see on a weekly time frame. You've got a consolidation with inside its profile as well. So this might be the price target really is at that 149 level, 140 to 149. When we take a look at uh, HUT, and then lastly, I believe if we get this out here, it's worth regard to Netflix and the intraday charts out here. So with regard to Netflix, what stands out to you, to me, to anybody? Intraday, that's the, the 65 minute chart. Here you're, you've got a nice road momentum indicator bottom, price above profile. Netflix looks like it wants to continue to rally, maybe get up to 334. Woo. Hey folks, have a terrific Thursday. I'll see you tomorrow. Normal programming on Fantastic Friday. Stay tuned. Be safe out there. We'll see you tomorrow.